now next thing is the distribution we are starting now the distribution so in between the test we also have the distribution portion because t test we are doing so i have included and included the t distribution here also in the t distribution you can see here you can see t distribution is something like normal distribution the only difference between the t distribution and normal distribution is that the pickedness this is called pickedness we will see pickedness i am not using the exact word kurtosis here because we haven't studied that yet we will study the kurtosis as well two terms are there one is called skewness skewness you know skewness is the how the data is arranged throughout the data set so whether it is a positive skewed if tail is in the right hand side whether it is negatively skewed if tail is in the left hand side so that will tell you the positiveness or the negativeness of the skewed data so that is skewness another term we have here is the kurtosis kurtosis tells about how peak of the data is arranged so here you can see this is the peak of the data so this peak can be at this point or at this point or maybe at this point so according to we uh, that we also have different types of kurtosis value leptocortic we have platycortic so similarly different type of kurtosis value value you can see so the difference between the t distribution and normal distribution is only that this peak the kurtosis is a little bit higher in the case of t distribution data is a little bit peaked as compared to the normal distribution and the normal distribution kurtosis is also totally plain as well as skewness is also fine or totally plain but here in the t distribution this data is a little bit peaked and here if you see this is deviation standard deviation so how much standard deviation do you have from the mean value x is the mean value here so here you can see that x plus minus sigma is equals to 68.27% it means if you are going away from the mean value in the right hand side as well as in the left hand side and if you are moving away by one standard deviation value so you will cover 68.26% of the all data this is the all data this is a graph so this is having all the data here so 68.6% data 26% data is under this particular area the very first area from this to this then if you move two sigma from the mean so there would be the conclusion or inclusion of 95.44% data it means approximate all the data you can see so that is when you are moving plus minus 2 sigma then plus minus 3 sigma 99.72% is under this mu plus minus 3 sigma three times of the standard deviation well so what do you have to do here you have to remember these percentage values which can be asked directly in the examination what is the value of x plus minus 2 sigma and in the option there would be 68.27 95.45 99.73 accordingly you have to answer so you have to remember these values only when you are moving from the mean value how much standard deviation one standard deviation two standard deviation three standard deviation so this is the t distribution so i hope this is clear to you now coming to the statistical test we have already seen the z test t test what are these tests these tests are called parametric test why parametric test because we make some assumptions here similarly we have the non parametric type of test as well where there is no requirement of making any assumption before doing the test so in the case of the t test z test we have seen that we we assume that the variances variances value or the deviation value of the two different population is almost similar Are same. The variances of the two different population is same. That is the assumption of the t-test and z-test. Similarly, you have to do some assumptions when you are doing the f-test, when you are doing the ANOVA test. So these all tests where you can make the assumptions about the parameters of the population distribution from which the sample is drawn. So that type of test would be called as parametric test. So this, these all are the parametric test examples. then non parametric test so in the case of non parametric test there is no requirement of making any assumption about the parameters of the population 
population distribution from which the sample is drawn. So here in these tests, here you can see these tests, there is no requirement of making any assumption. The test name you can see, Man Whitney test, Wilcox sign to tank test, Kruskal Wallis test, Friedman's ANOVA test. So these all are the non-parametric type of tests. And another very important non-parametric test we have here that is the chi-square test. So this chi-square test is only one test that is under your syllabus of this statistical unit. And apart from that, we will discuss only other parametric tests. E test, Z test, we have already discussed, already seen. F test, we will discuss. ANOVA, maybe we will discuss. So this is about the parametric and non-parametric test. These men, Whitney, Wilcoxon, Kruskal, Wallis, Friedman's, or just to remember the names of these. There is no requirement of studying these tests in very detail because this is not in your syllabus. So because this is part of the theory portion, so that's why I have provided the example for you here, but these all are not in your syllabus. So I hope this is clear to you. Let's see the next test after the T test and Z test. The next test, the, the next test we have to uh, study here, that is the chi square test. So chi square test we have already seen in the previous slide. There is no requirement of making any assumption in the chi square test. That's why this is a non-parametric test. This is used to compare sample variances to theoretical variances. So with the help of chi square test, suppose there is a sample one, there is sample two. So you can compare the variances sigma square of this one and sigma square of this two sample, second number sample. You can compare them both with the help of chi square test. So this one question already asked in the examination, which test is used to compare the two different variances, maybe sample variances, theoretical variances of the two different population or one population. So answer will be there, chi square test. So remember this slide. Then three different applications of the chi square test here you can see. Similarly, we have seen in the case of t-test as well. Three different formulas. Similarly, in the chi square, we have three different formulas. The very first formula here you can see is sigma square is equals to summation of O minus E whole square divided by E. So what is O and E here? O is the observed value here. E is the expected value here. Now, what is the observed value, expected value? Suppose you are going for a fishing. And what you will do, you will make some assumptions, expectation. Maybe you will make accept, uh, the expectance of the uh, catching 100 fees a day, or maybe only 10 fees a day. So based on the previous experience, maybe a few time back, you have already gone for that fishing zone and you have catched that much amount of fish on that day. So that way you can make any expectation here as well that I am going to catch this much amount of fees today. Then there would be actual value as well. Suppose you have assumed 100 fish you will catch, but you are able to catch only 10 fish a day. Maybe you have assumed 10 fish and you have captured 100 fish a day. So that is the observed value that how much you have actually calculated or the catch there and then how much you have been expected. So that is your E value. This is your O value. So if you want to the chi-square value calculation, this is the statistic, t statistic you can say, or the test value. This test value, this is what we do. So this test value you will get by having the total number of observed value, expected value, and difference of that of square and summation of that. So there would be multiple days. For the multiple days, maybe you will provide the observed value and expected value then summation of that all doing the square thing and the subtraction and this is divided by the expected value of each day so this summation sign should be actually uh, how to draw that the summation side should be actually like this this is also a part of this e not only o minus e whole square so once you have to o minus e whole square and this is divided by e then all those values you have to sum then you will get your chi-square test value. Then what you will do, you already know. You will compare that chi-square value with the table value. If it is lesser than that, then null hypothesis is accepted. 
if it is greater than that null hypothesis is rejected alternative hypothesis will be accepted so that thing would be same for all the different tests but here the test value you will get from this particular point then the chi square value is equals to ns square divided by sigma square here n is the number of observations or the sample size you can say s here is the standard deviation of sample and the sigma square we already know that is the population variance and remember this uh, s square sigma square are the different thing s here is for the sample that sample you have taken from the huge population maybe this is your huge population and one sample maybe you have taken from this population so this only one sample would be the value of s standard deviation of the sample not the whole population the sigma square is for the whole population so there is a difference between on them then chi square is equals to summation this is also the same thing this summation side should be below the line as well not just above the numerator size so here the sign should be like this actually so x minus x bar whole square this is the same thing that we have seen earlier as well the squared uh, the deviation from the mean value for all the values and a square of that and this is divided by the sigma square sigma square would be again the population variance so here this term you should remember this is sum of a square of deviation so this is sum this is square and this x minus x bar is actually deviation so i hope that is clear to you this is how you can test the multiple questions under the chi square test so directly jump into the questions already previously asked questions in the previous examination